I welcome every one of us to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the consistent study of the Word of God will benefit everyone, empower everyone, make everyone knowledgeable in the things of the Lord in Jesus' name. And the Word of the Lord will give us a great and strong backbone that anywhere we are, wherever the challenge, whatever the challenge, we will stand with a great backbone uncompromisingly in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the word that you have given us a great revelation from heaven that you have given everyone, every family and every church so that we can benefit from the study of the word and the word will prepare us to live a life that is conformed to your word, a life that will prepare us for heaven. We pray tonight again as we come here and every other place. We pray that this word will be so expounded by the Spirit of God and it will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Keep us awake and keep us uh, in paying attention to everything that comes through the Spirit of God from your word in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We're coming back to Daniel chapter 2. And in Daniel chapter 2, we're looking at verses 31 to 40 tonight. Daniel chapter 2, verse 31, Thou, O king, sawest. It was now relating the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and was going to give him the interpretation of that dream. He said, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold a great image. This, uh, this great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee and the form thereof was terrible. Verse 32, in verse 32 it says, This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, and his belly and his thighs of brass. Verse 33, then it says, His legs of iron, his feet part iron, part of iron, and part of clay. 34, in 34 it says, Thou sawest, was talking to Nebuchadnezzar, the king who had the dream but forgot the dream. He said, You saw till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. And then in verse 35 it says, it says then was the iron, the clay, the brass and the silver and the gold broken to pieces together and became like chaff, like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth verse 36 in verse 36 Daniel said this it's the dream. There was no doubt in his heart, and there was no unbelief in his heart, and there was no wondering. Suppose I was wrong. Suppose the king will say, Ah, uh ah, -uh, Daniel, that is not the case. He was so very sure because he knew that the Lord had revealed the truth unto him. This man had the gift of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, and, the, and he had the gift of faith, and he declared very clearly. That the forgotten dream and then he said this is the dream and we will tell thee the interpretation thereof before the king then in verse 37 verse 37 thou O king art a king 
of kings for the God of heaven has given thee a kingdom and power and strength and glory. The man was a heathen man. The man was a pagan. The man was not a Jew. He did not believe in the God of the Jews and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And yet, Daniel emphasized in that verse 36, he said, Thou king, in verse 36, Verse 36, please. In verse 36, it said, This is the dream, and we will tell thee the interpretation thereof before the king. Verse 37, now. In verse 37, it said, Thou, O king, art a king of kings, the God of heaven, this same God, the creator, and this same God that rules the heaven and the earth. And Daniel said, this, the God of heaven has granted thee, given thee a kingdom. Even though it was a Babylonian kingdom, even though it was a Gentile kingdom, yet it was the God of heaven that gave him that kingdom and power and strength and glory. Then verse 38, in verse 38 it says, And wheresoever the children of men dwell, and the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven as he given, as the God of heaven given into thine hand, and has made thee ruler over them all, thou art this head of gold. Verse 39, in verse 39 it says, and after thee, now, Nebuchadnezzar did not know there would be anybody after him. He thought he was king of kings, and he thought he was king overall. King now, king tomorrow, and king forever. But Daniel said, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall be bear rule over all the earth. And then in verse 40, it says in verse 40, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall each break in pieces and Bruce. That's what we're looking at today. We're studying the word of God today. The far-fetched or the far-reaching discovery of the forgotten dream. The far-reaching discovery. A discovery of a dream that went so far and reached so far and it is the discovery of the forgotten dream. We're dividing the message tonight to three parts. Number one, the prophet's discovery. Daniel was a prophet and now the prophet Daniel was going to discover the prophet's discovery of the eschatological dream. Eschatology is the study of future things, the future things about the uh, kingdom of Babylon and then the Middle Persian government that will follow and the Christian government that will follow and the Roman government that will follow before they ever came eschatology, the prophetic word that came from through the dream unto Nebuchadnezzar interpreted by Daniel. Number one then is the, is the prophet's discovery of the eschatology Pathological dream. Number two is the predicted deterioration of all earthly despots. The predicted deterioration because the, the one that will come after the Babylonian government will be inferior. The one that comes after that will still be inferior until the last one that will come will be a kingdom of iron and clay, very much inferior. And so we have the predicted deterioration of all earthly despots. Number three, the perpetual displacement by his eternal dominion. His stone will come. 
and that is standing for Christ, our Savior, our Lord, the one that will reign on all the kingdoms of the earth forever and ever. And it's a perpetual displacement we're going to have because the gold and the brass and the silver and the iron and the clay that represents deteriorating kingdoms will be smashed to pieces and then the wind of heaven will come and sweep everything away. The perpetual displacement that Christ will be all in Lord and all the kingdoms of this earth will be given to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and to the Lord Jesus our own Savior our Lord that will reign forever and thank God we will reign with him I said we will reign with him we're coming to point number one now point number one is the prophet's discovery of the eschatological dream. We've read Daniel chapter 2 already, but we're going to read now from verse 28. Chapter 2, chapter 2 verse 28, but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter Days, in the latter days it's not only in his day all the, the prophetic revelation will be fulfilled in the latter days the time of Babylon and then the time of Babylonian Empire then the time of the Grecian Empire then to the time of the Roman Empire and you know it has not even happened now because there is a space between the Roman Empire and the coming of the Lord it's at the coming of the Lord that he will displace all the kingdoms of the earth and so the prophecy that God gave to Nebuchadnezzar interpreted by Daniel went from the time of Babylon unto, unto the time of the latter days until the Lord will come. It says thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are this. Verse 29, in verse 29 it says, As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What shall come to pass hereafter? Uh, 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 this man, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, he was thinking, what will come after me? What will happen after me? Will there be any other kingdom as powerful, as rich, as high, and myself? He was thinking about that, and I was thinking about that. The Lord revealed to him this is what will happen. He tried to get the magicians and astrologers and the people to interpret for him. They could not because the children of the devil cannot interpret the revelation of the almighty God. So Daniel said and he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what will come to pass. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, it tells us there it says, But as for me, Daniel, the secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. That's the humility of a saved soul. If somebody is saved, it will be humble. If somebody is sanctified, he'll be more humble. Holiness and humility, they go together. Somebody cannot say, I know the Lord and is pompous and proud and haughty. Somebody cannot say, I know the Lord, that I know the lowly Nazarene. He says, because I am meek and lowly. And anybody following Christ will show that humility and will show that lowliness. And so Daniel showed he knew the Lord. He was reconciled with God. He was born again. He was a real child of God. And because of that, you could see the evidence of that humility and lowliness. It says it wasn't revealed to him because of having more wisdom than any living. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. We're dividing this in three parts. Number one, number one, we're looking at the preceding deliberations concerning 
the latter days. Number two, we're looking at the prophet's description of the lost dream. And then number three, the perplexing decline till their lamentable destruction. That is, all those kingdoms of the world, the lamentable uh, destruction that will come to them as they were perplexed before us, the kingdoms were declining. We're coming to number one. Number one, we're looking at the preceding deliberations concerning the latter days. Uh, look at uh, Daniel chapter 10. We're reading from verse 14. Daniel chapter 10. 10, reading from verse 14, now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. In the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. Here the angel came to Daniel on another occasion and he said, I'm going to show to you, I'm going to reveal to you, I'm going to expound to you the things that will happen in the latter days. The Lord does not want us to concentrate on the past this history, what has happened, that has happened. The water that has gone under the bridge has gone under the bridge. And he doesn't want us to concentrate fully, totally, completely on the things of this present time. Because the things to come, they are greater. The things to come are more impacting than the things of the present day. And so the angel came to tell Daniel to understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days? For yet the vision is for many days. Just like in the New Testament, in 2 Timothy, looking at chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it says, This know also. You know the things of the past, this know also. You know the things that are happening at the present time, this know also. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. And you know when it says in the last days, in the last days standing there, and then generation after generation were moving on, and were moving towards the latter days, and people think because of civilization, because of education, because of this and that things will be getting better and better and better until we get to a kind of a situation that Eden will come again and everything will be perfect God says no as we look at the future it says in the last days perilous times dangerous times difficult times shall come. And then he tells us in verse 13, in verse 13, but evil men shall work, and seducers shall wax worse and worse. As we're going on, the evil men are not going to be improving, the sinful men are not going to be improving, and the situation of the fleshly world, the carnal world, the sinful world, will not be, will not be improving. It says in these latter days we're talking about, it says evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. Look at 1 Timothy we're looking at chapter 4 verse 1. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times the last days at the end of all these human gentle kingdoms, in the latter days or latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Even those who have been believers before and they have been in the faith, it says as we're approaching the latter days and the latter times, some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits. Now the people who are born again, their children of God and those who are saying I'm saved, I'm saved forever they don't understand. And the people do not look at the signs of the times and they do not look at what is coming ahead. They do not understand and the flow with the river of the world and the backslide and it says they are influenced by the seducing spirit whispering to their ears and talking to them and telling them it doesn't matter you can do that you believe after all it doesn't matter you can go that way you believe after all but it says they'll be giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils doctrines of devils you know what that's the reason as we 
we you know go from here to there we go from uh, nigeria here to another country and then we bring all ministers together we don't tell anybody what they want to hear. We tell them what they ought to hear. We don't lower the standard of the word of God because if we do that, we are being seduced by the evil spirit. If we think we want to gather numbers together and because our goal is to gather numbers together, then we sort in the message and give them what they want to hear. The preacher will be seduced by seduction. But in the last days, because we know that some will depart from the faith and they say, if you want me to listen to you, tell me what I want to hear. Tell me things of the present. We say no, we say no, because we're approaching the latter days. And as we're approaching the latter days, there's only one thing we can do to get back some of those people that have departed from the faith, that have given heed to seducing spirits, and after this to the doctrines of devils we tell them the convicting word and we tell them the compelling word and we tell them the word that will bring them away from the spirit of the last days and then come to the Lord in fact it says in verse 2 look at verse 2 there speaking lies in hypocrisy and if you join them you're a child of God you're a believer you're a soul winner you're a minister you're a preacher if you join them speaking lies so as to tell them what they want to hear they're speaking lies in hypocrisy they have their conscience seared with a hot iron I pray we'll stand on the truth and we'll stand with the truth and live by the truth in these last days in Jesus name I need a good good amen Look at number two there, number two there, the prophet's description of the lost dream, of the lost dream. Anyone that can come like this, or the magicians were not able to discover or recover, what the astrologers were not able to recover or discover, and watch all the scientific people of the day at the time of Babylon, what they were not able to reveal. Now Daniel comes confidently, this man and add real connection with the almighty God and now he describes in detail he described without missing anything out the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had lost look at this we're looking at Daniel chapter 2 verse 31 it says thou O king saw it it said I'm going to tell you what you saw what you have forgotten behold a great behold you saw a great Great image, this great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, it says, This image's head was of gold, and his breast and his arms of silver, and his belly and his tides of brass. Then in verse 33, it says, In verse 33, his legs of iron and his feet part of iron and part of clay. Verse 34 In verse 34 thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them in pieces. Then verse 35 In verse 35 it says then was the iron, the clay the brass, the silver, the gold, the bro broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And then in verse 36, it says, this is the dream. This is the dream. And we, that's Daniel, Shedak, Meshach, and Amigo, we, we companions in prayer, we partners in prayer, we believers in the same God that received this revelation, we will tell the interpretation thereof. 
before the king, Isaiah chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 4, Isaiah chapter 14, we're looking at verse 4, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Against the king of Babylon. Look at Isaiah that lived in another time. Look at Isaiah that didn't even know about this dream. And the Lord gave him the revelation, the prophecy. And say, how has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Even Isaiah knew prophetically that Babylon will be referred to as the golden city. And yet... It will cease, it will be stopped, and the reign of Nebuchadnezzar will be terminated. Jeremiah chapter 51, we're reading from verse 7. Jeremiah 51, verse 7, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Look at that, look at that, that edge of gold, Daniel said, that's Babylon. Isaiah said, that's Babylon. And Jeremiah said, that's Babylon. Isn't it wonderful that no matter where the preachers are, they say the same thing. No matter where the prophets are, Isaiah, in his own time, Jeremiah in his own time, Daniel in his own time, no matter where the prophets are, they say the same thing. How is it that believers can be running after prophets that say different things about the same thing? This one will tell us about this thing that is coming at the end of this month in our country here. They will say this, another prophet will rise up and will say this, another prophet will say this, and they're saying different things. They're having different conclusions. And yet, the believers so-called are running after all of them. How can this be? Somebody is wrong somewhere. Somebody is gullible somewhere. Somebody is deceived somewhere. You see, the prophets of God, no matter what generation they live, they say the same thing. They're not saying anything to bribe anybody, cajole anybody, deceive anybody. They are for the truth And if we are children of God And we are the people, students of the Bible And we love the Bible Obey the Bible We say the same thing As the word of God said And so Babylon Has been the golden cup In the Lord's hand That made all the earth Drunken The nations have drunken Of our wine Therefore the nations uh, Matt, we're looking at Revelation chapter 17, and I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman that, that, that was a rich in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold. And decked with gold, it says, and precious stones and pearls, having golden cup, a golden cup in her hand, full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Mm -hmm. I about that, look at verse 5. In verse 5, it says, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon. Here John, the beloved, also reveals, it says that Babylon, as you are thinking about the one that is dressed in gold and all that, in this revelation, it says it's Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. All the prophets declare unto us that there is the description of that lost dream, of that golden head and that was Babylon. We're coming to number three. Number three is the perplexing decline till their uh, lamentable destruction. It tells us in Daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 32. It says this image's head was of fine gold 
and the breast and his breast and his arms the silver now you understand what he said the arms of silver arm one arm two you see the middle persian government has two parts the middle persian the persians and the medes and so it's daniel saw everything distinctly and correctly he sent the one that will follow after you they'll have two branches the meet the medes and the persians the middle persian empire it says the arms of silver and his belly and tie of brass and then in verse 33 it says in verse 33 his legs of iron and his feet part iron and part of clay you know iron iron the, the roman government they were you know they, they were of iron even all their armor and all their shield all their shoes everything of iron and they had a brutal march throughout all the places they governed and in verse 34 it tells us it says thou sawest till that is stone that the final one that had the final say that had the final power that would demolish and crush all those uh, empires all those kingdoms of the gentile world and it said thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces they were told in verse 35 it says in verse 35 it says then was the iron the clay the brass the silver and the gold broke into pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth I were looking at Jeremiah chapter 51 reading from verse 8 in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 8 Babylon is suddenly falling and destroyed when they were in power and then Nebuchadnezzar said this is great Babylon that are built by the power of my might they never knew they could ever go down but it says Babylon is suddenly falling and destroyed how for her take balm for her for her pain if so be she may be healed look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says we would have healed babylon but she is not healed forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country all the people that children dominated and all the people the children captive it says let us go everyone to his own country for her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies i look in at first thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 3 in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 it says for when they shall say it's not talking about the whole earth talking about the world talking about those who will be who are living at the time of the earth because you know all these things were reading really refer us to what will happen in the latter days and it says for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape revelation chapter 18 we're looking at it from verse 2 in revelation chapter 18 verse 2 and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is falling is falling that revelation had been revealed from the time of isaiah and then jeremiah and then daniel and with one voice and with united faith all the prophets of God until the until this apostle John who also was a prophet until they all declared that he cried mightily the angel cried mightily with a strong voice saying 
Babylon the great is falling, is falling, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it tells us there, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the and, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the uh, through the abundance of her delicacies. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it now tells us, it say, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her. The world in which we live is now governed by the God of this world. And if you are, you know, giving to the whole world your heart, your mind, your head, your skill, and your everything you are doing is giving to the world, the world is going to melt away. The world is going to collapse at the latter time, and we're very near. We're very near that latter time. Everything will be scattered. Everything will be destroyed. And if that's all you have, your time, your life, your skill, everything you've given to the world, then you're going to have a great shocking disappointment in the final day. That's why it says now that we can really see. Now that we know that the destruction is coming, it says, come out of her, my people, that she be not partakers of her sins, and that she receive not of her plagues. Then in verse 5, it tells us in verse 5, it says, for our sins have reached unto heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, he tells us, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her body. We'll come to point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at the predicted deterioration of all earthly despots. You see those despots like um, Nebuchadnezzar, they are empty on the inside. They are fearful on the inside. They are perplexed on the outside. On the inside. On the outside, they go they look great and they look mighty and they look unshakable but not really so you have seen after Nebuchadnezzar saw this dream and he couldn't get the interpretation you'll see how fearful he was that if you're able to give me the interpretation I'll promote you if you don't give me the interpretation the man was frightened even though openly outwardly he appeared very strong wicked people they might look strong sinful people, they might look strong, pagan people, they might look strong, heathen people, Gentiles, they might look strong, but on the inside, sometimes the window is open, and they know that judgment is coming, and they are frightened on the inside, the predicted deterioration of all, all, all earthly despots. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2 verse 37. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 37, it says, Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given thee a kingdom and power and strength and glory. Actually, the reason why the punishment of the people of the world will be very, very terrible and traumatizing and tormenting is that everything they have got they didn't know god but god had given them the power the strength the glory and the kingdom and yet they will not worship god and they will not have any excuse because god will say i give you this everyone everyone even those of us who are here everyone listening to the bible study god is the one that has given you everything you have everything you possess everything you enjoy and when you don't serve god appropriately you're not paying your rent because he gave you the lunch 
to sow on. He gave you the land to farm. He gave you the house. He gave you the family. He gave you the wife. He gave you the husband. He gave you everything to make your life enjoyable. And yet, you're not reciprocating. That is the reason why judgment will come upon everyone on the earth. It tells us in verse 38. In verse 38, it tells us, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven as he given into thine hand and has made thee ruler over them all thou art this head of gold in verse 39 verse 39 tells us and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth and then in verse 40 it assures us here and it tells us and the fourth kingdom shall be shall be strong as iron for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the initial golden edge of gentile kingdoms. Number two, we're looking at the inferior godless holders of the gentile kingdoms. Number three, we're looking at the invisible grinding hands against gentile kingdoms look at number one number one is the initial golden head of the gentile kingdoms you know that already you know this is referring to that initial head of the gentile kingdoms of babylon look at ezekiel chapter 26 we're reading from verse 7 ezekiel 26 verse 7 for thus says the lord god behold i will bring upon tyre Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, a king of kings, not the king of kings, a king of kings. Why? Because he'll subdue all the little, little kingdoms, and those kings he subdued, they will come under his rulership, and they'll come under his dominion. That's why he's called a, not the, a king of kings and he says from the north with horses and with the chariots and with us men and companies and much people see isaiah said this man is the king the head of gold jeremiah said is the head of gold daniel says is the head of gold and then ezekiel now comes he says this Nebuchadnezzar is the king, is a king of kings, and much people and many kings will be under him. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 25. Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 25, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven and seven times seven years seven seasons shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high rulers in the kingdom of men and Give it to whomsoever he will. Uh, number one, think about Daniel. Daniel in the kingdom of Babylon. Talking to the king of Babylon. And he knew, Daniel knew, this is a king of kings. And then for him to come and stand before the king and say, uh, this is another dream now, another revelation to say, you are that king the king a king of kings and you rule over this this and this but you know the revelation says you nebuchadnezzar will be driven away from men you will go to the forest you will eat grass 
like animals and your heart will be changed to that of the animal my question is what preachers do you know that can tell the truth to the kings of our day what religious man do you know that will tell the truth to the people who hold the reign of power you see the people of that of our day they are not used to telling the truth interpreting the word and telling the world what the bible what the word of god says if they go to the king at all they're looking for something they're looking for gifts they're looking for this and that and among us where do you find the person a man a woman that knows the truth that can tell even our fellow brother our fellow sister the truth are we, are we not a generation of people who cajole who deceive are we not a generation of people who cannot stand uncompromisingly for the truth you see if we're going to serve god if we're going to represent god we must stand with our backbone and when you stand with your backbone straight and you say this is the truth people will know that you are not in religion for money you are not in the religion for fame you are not in religion for anything you can get out of religion you are there because god has sent you and you're willing to declare the truth whatever because that's what you find of this man Daniel he told him look at verse 32 there in that same Daniel chapter 4 he tells us in verse 32 he says they shall drive thee in each see they shall drive your enemy as people say he said you Nebuchadnezzar they will drive you from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field they shall make thee eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will look at verse 35 in verse 35 it says and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing this Nebuchadnezzar now when he got well when that insanity was taken away from him he said now I know now I understand that all the inhabitants of the earth shall are reputed as nothing and he doeth according to his will he says now i know the god of heaven doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can say and none can stay a sign or say unto him what doest thou verse 37 in verse 37 it tells us and this Nebuchadnezzar still talking now I Nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to abase nebuchadnezzar says i can talk from experience he said he was very proud he was pompous he was haughty until that thing came on him now he recognizes there is a god in heaven and that god of heaven anyone that walks in pride he the god of heaven is able to abase we're coming to number two here number two here we're looking at the inferior godless holders of gentile kingdoms the inferior godless holders of gentile kingdoms daniel chapter 2 we're looking at verse 39 uh, daniel chapter 2 daniel chapter 2 verse 39 in verse 39 and after thee nebuchadnezzar shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee and another third kingdom of brass which shall be a rule over all the 
earth they are world empires look at verse 40 in verse 40 it says and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron uh, breaketh in pieces and so doeth all things and as iron uh, that breaketh all these shall each break in pieces and bruise then in verse 41 uh, it tells us there it says and, uh, and whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes part of a part of potter's clay and part iron mixed together the kingdom shall be divided but there shall be in each of the strength of the iron and for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with the clay and then in verse 42 verse 42 then tells us and as the toes of the of the feet were part of iron and part of clay so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken partly weak partly destructible it, it says in uh, chapter 10 of uh, daniel verse 20 daniel chapter 10 we're looking at uh, verse 20 it says then said he knowest thou wherefore i come unto thee and now will i return to fight with the prince of Persia? now what had happened here is that daniel was praying and he prayed for 21 days before the angel came with the answer and then he explained he said you know why i didn't come in good time because i was there when he was coming from god from heaven in the sky between heaven and earth the prince of uh, the grecian empire or the Persian, Middle Persian Empire met him and they fought together until he broke through and came and he said now as I'm going back I'll be also fighting with the Prince of Persia and when I am gone forth lo the prince of Grecia shall come what that means is that there are heavenly powers heavenly demons heavenly spirits that confront the angels that are sent to come and bless the kingdoms of the world here look at uh, john chapter 11 we're reading from verse 48 in john 11 verse 48 they said if we leave if we let him those that's the high priest Caiaphas talking about jesus christ if we let him alone those he says all men will believe on him on christ and the romans it was the roman empire at the time of jesus that's the point we're making here he said the romans shall come and take away both our place and nation but the point is whether the babylonian government the middle persian government the grecian government and the roman empire they are all dwindling and decreasing and deteriorating eventually they will be totally destroyed we're looking at number three number three it says the invisible grinding hands against the gentile kingdom we're looking at daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 34 daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 34 thou sawest till his stone was cut out without hands a stone was cut out without hands. This is the action of God. Do you remember? We're still going to study that when the Shasta and the concubines and the wives and the counselors and all his people, when they were drinking out of the vessels taken from the house of the Lord from Jerusalem, a hand appeared on the wall and was writing. It was writing his doom, his judgment that it was finished. It was a hand without you couldn't see the body doing the writing over here again this is divine and this is the almighty god it says a cut out without hands which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces then verse 35 verse 35 tells us it says then was the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold broken to pieces together they were destroyed 
they were scattered they were totally crushed and they were swept away and their power was taken away from them it became like the chaff of the summer a threshing floors and the wind the wind of god's judgment carried them away and that no place was found for them it means all their history and all their activities and all their powers and all their achievements everything to them swept away and then it says the stone now the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth that's why I was seeing Jesus shall reign all over the earth wherever there is some, because it became a mountain and it filled all the earth and then we're told in chapter 8 of Daniel Daniel chapter 8 we're reading from verse 25 in Daniel chapter 8 verse 25 and through his policy that's the Antichrist that's the one that will rule just before Christ comes also shall he cause craft to prosper lying to prosper deception to prosper hypocrisy to prosper in the sun and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall he destroy many and he shall also stand up against the prince of princes that is the antichrist at the time of the end shall stand against the prince of princes and he shall shall be broken without hands, destroyed without hands. We're told in uh, Matthew chapter 21, uh, verse 44. In Matthew chapter 21, reading from verse 44, and whosoever shall fall on this stone uh, shall be broken. Whosoever voluntarily shall fall on this stone in repentance, whosoever shall fall on Christ, seek him for, uh, seek him for forgiveness and freedom and seek him for reconciliation and righteousness and seek him for salvation, his heart is broken. His heart is spread. And then he says, what shall I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And you say, but then but on whomsoever it shall fall, that is, this stone fall on him, it will grind him to powder. That's talking of the judgment that will come upon the people that do not voluntarily repent and they wait till the day of judgment for that stone to fall upon them and crush them and then send them away to where sinners will live forever and ever. We're looking at point number three here. Point number three is the perpetual displacement of by his eternal dominion, by his eternal dominion. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, we're looking at the smiting power of the supernatural stone. The smiting power of the supernatural stone. We're looking at number two, the sudden uh, parousia. Parousia there means the coming of the Lord. That's a Greek word that means Christ is coming. And that appearance and that coming is called parousia. It said the sodding parousia of the shattering stone. And then number three, the saving promise of the shepherd stone. Number one, number one, we're looking at the smiting power of the supernatural stone. Daniel chapter two, reading from verse 34, thou sawest till that a stone was caught out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were iron and clay, and break them in pieces. In verse 35, in verse 35, it says, Then was the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold broke into pieces. Remember, those are kingdoms, the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold. Remember, 
their kingdoms, those world empires that will be until Christ will come. Then it says they broke in together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away. Now, why, why do we envy these people? They are kings of their emperors, and they are this and that, and we do not know that all their laboring and all their all their popularity and all their prowess and all their powers and all their gain and everything, everything is going to be blown away. Everything is going to be burnt in fire. And the Lord is asking us, what manner of man should we be when all these things shall happen? Instead of envying them, instead of running after them, instead of envying them, we pity them. And then if we cannot reach them with the saving gospel of the Lord, at least we get ourselves saved. We say, Lord, think about me. I, as we say, Lord, have mercy on me so that my end will not be like the end of these empires and emperors. Now, if we don't have anything in this world, we can say, this is what I possess in comparison with them. Why are we going to suffer here? belittled here, set apart here, or set aside here, and then when that kingdom comes, we have nothing to show for real salvation. That is, oh, if those things are going to happen to them, we ought to go on our knees, on our faces, and tell the Lord, I don't want to have the portion and the eternal destruction of those people that seem to be powerful here on earth, and they have nothing that will qualify them for even an accepted man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god let's come back to them it says that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth uh, look at uh, verse uh, uh, we're looking at Psalm 2 and we're reading from verse 1. In Psalm 2 verse 1, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? What's the vain thing? They think they live forever. They think they don't need Jesus. They think the empire they have, the kingdom they have, the dominion they have will live forever, will be forever. And they do not think that they're going to come to penny and poverty and perdition on the final day. Look at verse 9. In verse 9 it says thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. The same thing. Just a different picture. And Daniel reveals that that stone was matched. That image will totally go to pieces. And here the sum is it's a farming. Here is David in the place of a prophet now and he says thou the son of God the one that is sent by the almighty God he shall break them with a rod of iron and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel any hope look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says be wise now therefore before what happened to Nebuchadnezzar happens to anyone be wise now therefore before the mind is changed and before the man becomes almost like an animal and is eating grass like animal be wise now therefore before you are subdued seven sees him passing over you believe the word of God and be wise now therefore O ye kings be instructed ye judges of the earth and then in verse 11 in verse 11 he says serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling verse 12 verse 12 says kiss the son, embrace the son, believe the son, and love the son, and accept the offer of the son of God who offers salvation now. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. And then it says, blessed are all they that put their trust and their faith and their confidence in him. He wants us to love him because the time is coming for the world, the whole world. I say, chapter 13, we're looking at verse 9. I say, chapter 13, verse 9, behold, the day of the Lord cometh. 
This is the day of man. This is the day of Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar can put anyone he wants in the furnace of fire. And Nebuchadnezzar can do whatever he wants now. He can raise up an idol. He can invite people to come and worship idol. And he can say, he doesn't, if I decide to cast you into the fire, where is that God that can deliver you out of my hand? This is Nebuchadnezzar. Day. This is the day of Middle Persian Empire. Now they can cast anybody into the den of lions you cannot pray to anybody for these 30 days it is their day they can make this edict they can make this law but then the day of the Lord is coming when the hands of man will hang down when all the all that man has been planning when everything was total but when man can decide I will worship God or maybe he has a reason I don't want to worship God this is the day of man but the day of the Lord is coming. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Not only Nebuchadnezzar, not only the emperors of the Middle Persian Empire, and not only the emperors of Greece or the Roman Empire, it and now all men, all sinners, it shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. We're looking at uh, verse 10 there. In verse 10, it tells us, it says, For the stars of heaven and the constellations of uh, thereof shall not give their life. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth, and the moon shall not cause a light to shine. And then in verse 11, it says, And I will punish the world for their evil. I will punish not only Nebuchadnezzar and not only those emperors, not only those evil kings of the Gentile world, I will punish the earth for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I pray that when that day will come, will be on the Lord's side even from now in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the sudden parousia. That is the sudden appearance of the Son of God. The sudden appearance of our Lord and Savior. The sudden appearance of the one that is said, I go away. And if I go away to prepare a place for you, I will come again so that I will take you to where I am, where I am there you'll be is coming the one that the angel said why well, look ye up here and uh, you disciples they same Jesus whom you have seen uh, going to heaven he will come again the Lord is coming again we don't know the time the hour or the minute when he's coming that's why we ought to be ready every time because he will come suddenly and then there will be the shattering of the kingdoms of the earth it tells us in uh, First Thessalonians, reading from chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Then in verse 2, it tells us in verse 2, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall so, so cometh, as a thief in the night. Then in verse 3, it says in verse 3, But when they shall see peace and safety, then sudden destruction. They will not be ready. It will be like on the day when the rain began to pour down. And no, I don't want the people. We couldn't tell them the day, the date, the hour, or the time. But it happened. It will be like the time of Lord when judgment eventually came. And the day that Lord and his family went out, that fire rained from heaven. The Lord has shown us examples in the past and is saying that it will come. Judgment is coming. And where will you be? And where will you spend eternity? It says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon 
among them has travailed upon a woman or child, and they shall not escape. It tells us in Matthew chapter 24, and I'm reading from verse 35. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, it says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Verse 36, verse 36 says, but of that day and hour, noise no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Verse 37, but at the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. At the days of Noah, so will the day of the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 38, in verse 38 it says, But at the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage until the day day that Noah entered into the ark verse 39 in verse 39 it says and he knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be what are we to do then to be ready before that day we're looking at verse 42 there in verse 42 it says watch the Therefore, it says to one and all, watch therefore. It says to members and even sinners, the people have had the message of salvation and they have not yielded. It says, watch therefore. The people that allow little, little things and, and to make them go away from the Lord and to say, I'm going to the far country and they become prodigal sons and prodigal daughters. It says, watch, watch. The people at every time something happens that they don't like, I'm going, I'm going like a wife in the house. House, you know, things are difficult, and then starts packing. I'm going, I'm going, and then they beg and beg, and will come back again. And something happened. I'm going, I'm going. Well, to be careful because these are days, they're dangerous days, and they're days when if you make it a habit, every time you know you don't like this, you don't like this, then you are no more there. It says, Watch therefore, and for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Look at Luke chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 28. In Luke chapter 17, verse 28, likewise, also as it was in the days of Lord. They did eat and they drank and they bought and they sold, they planted and they built it. And then in verse 29, in verse 29 it says, But the same day that Lord went out of Sodom, and he, he trained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Now he tells us in verse 32, in verse 32, Jesus said, remember Lord's wife. I am saved, I'm saved. Remember Lord's wife. I am saved, I'm saved. You are gambling with your salvation. You are gambling with your faith in Christ. You are gambling because your flesh is drawing you and drawing you there. Remember Lord's wife. You make it a habit of, you know, a part of you in the world, a part of you in the church. And then you are looking back. Remember, Lord's wife, she looked back and became a pillar of salt. That's what we're told in Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 34. And take heed to yourselves. These are the words of Jesus Christ to his own disciples, to his people, and to us, his people who are saved, his people who are serving the Lord. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged or so fitting and drunkenness and the cares of this life and so that they come upon you unawares and then he tells us in verse 35 it says for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth verse 36 it says in verse 36 what she therefore believer what she therefore saved soul what she therefore sanctified believer what she therefore baptized 
baptized in the Holy Ghost, what she therefore you're serving the Lord, what she therefore, and you have the privilege of coming and hearing the watch of God that will keep you ready and prepare you for that day before it comes. It says to one, it says to all, it says to me, it says to you, it says to everyone, don't be so secured in your supposition. It can never happen to me. I cannot be lost. Jesus said, for everyone, watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the saving promise of the shepherd's stone. He is the shepherd. And it's referred to a stone as the shepherd. If you look at Genesis chapter 49, reading from verse 10, it said, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. I'm sure you know that's talking about the Lord when he comes unto him for salvation that the people come. Unto him for his shepherding shall the people come. Unto him for sufficiency shall the people come. Look at verse 24 there. In verse 24 it says, But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob, from this is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. The shepherd, the stone of Israel. And we'll return to him. And there's no other name by which we can be saved except that, that name is the saving stone. In Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 11. Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 11. This is the stone which was set at naught of your builders, which has become the hedge of the corner. This is the stone. Who is that? Look at verse 12. In verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He is the saving shepherd. He is the saving stone. And he is the one who has given us the promise we can come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, restoration, righteousness, and redemption. It will give us salvation. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 13, and we're reading from verse 20. Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 20, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant it says in verse 21 it says make you perfect it is when we come to him we're imperfect in our sin we're imperfect in the flesh we're imperfect before coming to meet the lord and then when we meet the lord in repentance and faith he takes away our sin our guilt our condemnation and he transfers his righteousness unto us and then we also go to him him, even after we are saved, he purges us, he purifies us, he takes impurity and imperfection away from our lives. And as we trust him, he makes us the people we are to be anytime and every time. He says he'll make you perfect in every good work to do his will, walking in you, walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever in our lives in Jesus' name. We're looking at Second Peter chapter 3. We're reading from verse 9. In Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise that that stone without hand or behold at all the kingdoms of this world, and everything will collapse and will be shattered and will be blown away. That promise and that prophecy. The Lord is not slack concerning that promise or prophecy as some men count slackness 
but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish if you are not saved the lord has been waiting for you if you are backsliding the lord has been waiting for you he doesn't want to just do this he wants you to come in and come into the kingdom and come into the fold because he's not willing that any should perish but that all shall come to repentance and then in verse 10 he tells us in verse 10 but the day of the lord as i spoke about it the day of the lord and all the prophets of old testament and even new testament and Thessalonians, first Thessalonians, that is from paul the apostle they all spoke about this day of the lord it says but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night and the and it says in the which the heaven shall pass away not only those kingdoms and not only those kings even the sky even the stars everything will pass away and then it says with great noise and the elements there it shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up and then in verse 11 in verse 11 it says seeing these that seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought she to be in all holy conversation and godliness verse 12 in verse 12 it says looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire the skies the moon, the sun, and all the earth being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements of the earth shall melt with fervent cheek. Then in verse 13, it says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Verse 14, verse 14 says, Wherefore, beloved, you are born again, wherefore, beloved, you are sanctified wherefore beloved you are in the kingdom you are serving the Lord wherefore beloved you are called a brother you are called a sister wherefore beloved seeing that ye look for such things that you believe the word of God that the final day will come for this one you believe the word of God that all these things shall melt away and then God will create a new earth and a new heaven in wherein dwelleth righteousness wherefore seeing that ye look for such things is be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace peace with god peace within yourselves peace with your wife peace with your husband and peace with your neighbors and peace with the church and peace with the leadership and peace with the brethren if you know that christ can come at any time and you don't want to be blown in pieces you want to have peace in your heart and peace in your relationship with everyone you want to have the evidence of salvation because the salvation of god that gives us peace you want to have the evidence of sanctification a sanctification that gives us the god of peace cleansing us washing us and, and blotting everything that is disorderly away from our lives it says to be found of him in peace without spot and blameless i pray that the grace which is available as we call upon him will be in every life in your life your family and everywhere and will not be careless as to when this will happen when it happens all the people of the world along with Nebuchadnezzar and others they will be blown off into judgment but those who know the Lord and love the Lord will abide forever and ever I will be with the Lord forever in Jesus name you'll be there I said you'll be there why don't you rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer? He has revealed uh, quite a lot to us and want to be able to have uh, time to pray, pray, and pray our hearts out. Pray like sincere children of God, sincere believers here and in every location, anywhere we are, pray, and the Lord will get us ready.